Welcome to CS61A, the uh, best computer science course in the universe. And uh, that's not because I'm teaching it. Um, it's because of this book, which is the best computer science book ever written, uh, Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. They named the book after the course. No, I'm kidding. Um, we named the course after the book. Um, this is a course that assumes that you know how to program computers. Uh, but you're probably going to learn in this class to program computers in a way that's different from what you've done before. Um, so you will have a better experience if you're sort of open to new ideas about programming. Um, up on the screen there, which you can't see the left edge, I have to tell you the story. About, what, two or three years ago, they installed a very expensive, wonderful new video system in here, replacing the old video system. And they told us all how much better everything was going to be. And every single semester since they did that, it's about week three before they managed to get the edges of the computer screen to show up on the projector. Um, so technology is all a bad idea. Um, OK, uh, I'm going to just jump in and show you scheme. So I say STK here at the Unix shell. And it types a bunch of stuff, most of which you can't read. Um, and it says, um, it says STK greater than, of which you can probably only see the greater than. Yeah. So off to the left of that, it says STK. Uh, that's schemes prompt. STK is a particular uh, implementation of the scheme programming language. Um, Scheme is a dialect of Lisp. Uh, Lisp is the second oldest computer programming language that's still in use. Um, so it must have had some good ideas in it. Um, and Scheme is a descendant of Lisp um, that has really been sort of tuned up to be beautiful and sleek and elegant. Um, and we use it, well, we use it because the book uses it. But the book uses it, the reason they chose it, aside from the fact that it was invented by one of the authors, aside from that, they chose it because uh, I'm going to teach you all of Scheme in the next half hour or so. And once we've done that, we can go on and talk about computer science, not like that course you took in high school where they spent an entire semester telling you where to put semicolons, right? Um, so here goes. Scheme is an interactive language. I ask it a question. It tells me the answer. So I say six. And you can't see the answer, um, <laughs> but if I insert some spaces here, um, you can see that it said six. Okay? So that was an easy question. And now I'm going to ask it plus eight, seven. And I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, and it said 15. Um, so you're accustomed to seeing uh, 8 plus 7 as the way to ask the question that I just asked Scheme. Um, and people coming upon this notation for the first time always find it a little strange looking. Um, and why do we use this notation? And uh, there are a couple of answers to that. One answer is uh, it allows for a uniformity that you don't get in traditional notation. So traditionally, if the function you want is plus, you put it in between its two inputs. Um, if the function you want is sine, you put it before its input, like that, with a space in between. Um, if the function you want is square root, you kind of wrap it around its input. Um, if it's factorial, you put it after the input. So too many notations. Oh, and plus there's you know, f of 3 comma 4. There's that notation. Um, this has the advantage of generality because you know, if I want a function that has six inputs, I can do that. Our notation has that advantage also. I can say plus 8, 7, uh, 300, 2,000. And I get the answer 2,315. So you can give plus as many uh, arguments, inputs as you want. 
Um, what answer would you expect? Seven. And you get nothing, but I got um, seven. What, argue, what answer would you expect? Zero. Zero. Um, and in fact, that's what I got. Okay? Um, what an oh, the asterisk stands for multiplication, um, same as in most languages. So what is the answer going to be to this? One. Because one is the multiplicative identity element, so it's the right thing when you call it with no arguments. Um, okay. What if I just say plus sign without the parentheses? Error. Nope. Not quite. I get this hideous thing. Um, what that is is STK's way of printing out a function. So the value of the plus sign, if, the, if I ask the question plus sign, the answer that I get isn't a number, it's not an error message, it's the addition function. And that's what the addition function looks like. Now, it's not very nice to look at, but you can do things with it, like for example, call it with some arguments in order to add things. Okay? So, the most important thing that you've learned from that example is that in scheme, parentheses matter. So in sort of ordinary math and in many programming languages, I could take this 8 plus 7 and put parentheses around it and put some more parentheses around that, and it wouldn't matter. That's never true in scheme. Uh, parentheses are always meaningful. Um, either you have to put them or you have to not put them, depending on what it is you're trying to do. And in almost every case, we'll look at a couple of exceptions as we go, but almost every case, um, what the parentheses mean is call a function, actually compute the value of a function with a particular set of inputs. Okay? So when I said open parenthesis, plus sign, close parenthesis, I was saying call the addition function, don't give it any arguments. Any, it's in a fancy name for inputs. When I said plus sign without the parentheses, I was saying I want the addition function itself. I'm not trying to call it. Um, you'll see as we go, it's, that's not going to be very helpful to you right now, the ability to do that, but you'll see as we go that the ability to treat functions as data, as you know, perfectly good values, um, is very, very, very powerful as a way of expressing what you want to do in a program. Okay. Um, function names aren't always punctuation marks. For example, I can ask for the square root of 16. What? Oh, it's fixed. Yay. Thank you. Um, awesome. Didn't take them three weeks. They're getting better. We'll see if it works on Friday. Um, that's the test. Okay. I'm not making fun of the people in the projection booth. I'm making fun of their fancy system. But that would be a <laughs> <laughs> No problem. <laughs> that was the voice of God. <laughs> um, who doesn't like it when you make fun of the fancy system? Okay. Um, okay, great. So we're winning. Um, so functions can have names that are made up of letters and stuff. They don't have to be punctuation symbols. Um, the way we do things in our program that are more complicated. I have now taught you about 90% of scheme. Okay? That's the language. There are these functions, and you call them. That's it. Um, so that doesn't seem like a very fancy language, and you're wondering how you can get anything interesting done. And one of the answers to that is composition of functions. We can take the result of one function call and use it as the argument to another function call. So I can say add. Oops, three times four and, I don't know, six times eight. And I got whatever 24 plus 48 is, is 60. Okay? So the way scheme evaluates expressions is from the inside out. So first it does the three times four, it gets 12. 
It does the 6 times 8, it gets 48. Um, and it does 12 plus 48, that's what I, yeah, 12 plus 48 is 60. So inside out. <laughs>